Well, hello there, people of YouTube. Fat guy with old computers here, and I got just a little uh, doing a video test and some updates. And uh, pretty. Uh, just a little update video, and I will get back to work. I swear. Um, I got this little guy. I'm gonna show you first. Um, why does it matter? Uh, it doesn't really matter that much, but I needed something, uh, I should have taken the hard drive, or the, I should have taken that out, but I needed something to back up my main system, I mean to back up my mother's laptop, phones, all these, I needed something that, that can interface well with a tape drive, and the tape drive that I have is SCSI, so I needed something SCSI, so I got a SCSI card, I got a super micro atom board in here, and it's basically just going to be a nice little raid array. It's just a small one um, that is going to have a live backup for probably about four computers. And about every week or so, it'll back up the tape, you know, or maybe a little bit less often than that, but it'll back up to tape the important things. And when I go to the bank every week, I can just swap it and go into the. Uh, the box and or the the security box and uh, swap out the tape. So I have one off site. That's you know it'll do just important keep the important papers. But with tax time coming up, so that's that. Uh, so was, and we'll move on and I'll show you the other things that I'm working on. Okay, so projects in no particular order. Uh, the dual tie-in boards that I showed earlier, uh, they started popping caps. I believe and they have all kinds of there's like 60 caps per board on those little dual Pinion Pro tie-ins so I'm gonna replace those shit ass ta uh, tantalums with electrolytics so I got a whole bunch there from Mauser uh, I gotta do that eventually uh, okay so that's in there uh, I picked this up real real cheap for 10 bucks not well the cable was an additional 10 bucks but uh, two of the cables and two 10 gig network cards uh, I got them really 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 cheap it is a crying shame that free NAS doesn't work with these because that would have been really nice of course that's probably why they were so damn cheap I'll have to probably spring for uh, I might make my own 10 gig hub I might use it like that I might not at least eh, we'll figure something I'll figure something out you know, at the very least, I got these cable, the cables. So, you know, 10 gig gets cheap now. Okay, so got this last night from eBay. Uh, isn't it funny? Uh, ha ha ha! Funny joke. Okay. Uh, still got a smell to it. So. I won an auction on eBay, naturally, for the internals to an IBM PS2 Model 80. And I'm, ah, got a floppy drive. Uh, those are always, those, those are something you should just pick up whenever you see them. Because they are not getting anywhere plentiful. Uh, a crappy, ooh. Ew. Scuzzy card, but I don't, I'm good on that. I really got it. One, for the floppy drive. Two, uh, because it, there were pieces to that Model 80 that I showed in a previous video that I needed. And this one came with it. And I'm like, ooh, yeah. Uh, SCSI cable. They use a proprietary SCSI cable because IBM. So just grab them whenever you can. Comes with two 4 meg memory cards. These are always good to have. There's no such thing as having too much RAM. But one of the little special things I wanted, and I had to ask for a special, but I got it. Uh, I can't do this one-handed. But I'm... I asked nicely, and I got drive bezels from the one he tore out, tore apart. Uh, it just 
Would I have preferred the whole place plate? Yeah, but... Anyway, I got the drive bezels now for the one that I have. And I got this motherboard. And it lives with keen eyes. You should already see why it's a good one to pick up. Not incredibly, well, relatively speaking, it wasn't common. It's not a reply board. Oh, God, no. That thing's expensive as hell. But it is a nice 386. And the first, and the dead away giveaway is the LT Cash. So this is for the A series, the last generation of the Model 80s with the faster board. But I needed a 386 processor. And I didn't have one for some weird reason I couldn't find one so for the cost of you know a little bit more I got the bezels that I need I got the uh that I got some extra ram I got a whole spare board I got a couple of spare parts spare parts are always good and I got to looking and it's a 25 megahertz system so this was the the very very fastest model 80 well on stock model 80 quiet so i got a 25 megahertz 386 i can swap this out for the other one which is only a 20 now i know you have to swap the whole board because everything runs on this little clock and it has the clock and that's that one by the way is for the coprocessor and that one is 20 megahertz i think 20 megahertz is for the bus don't quote me on that and they they do, they have the thing, so it's it's forty crystal twenty minutes. Yeah, da, 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 da. Anyway, I'm joining on. So the very next thing I'm going to do is finally get around to testing that Model Eighty, because I'm going to pop this CPU out, pop in the other one, and I'm going to go from there. And I'm going to see if that old one works. And if it doesn't, I get a whole replacement board for it. No matter what, I'm going to get something working today. Okay, so I felt I'd take a, a moment here, just to, because I'm not going to get a better opportunity to do this, just to poke around the board, point some things out, um, because you really don't get to look at these very often, because they're kind of a pain in the world yes, to get in and out of the case, but these are micro-channel slots. Um, we got one, two, I got two, four of the 32-bit, full 32-bit ones, and we have four of the 16 bit and we have two with this little connector off the back and I'm like 90% sure I'm not don't 100% quote me but off the top of my head these are for uh, video cards why does that matter well the onboard video actually will talk to your video card on here through this little extra slot right here and for in the in the the eighty five twelve video card, um, where it doesn't have any, where it doesn't have all the full functionality, the motherboard will still make a video signal, and it will output into the this video card, and then that video card will output to the monitor. So, if you had like a th early three D card where it didn't have, it's kind of like the Voodoo one and two thing, where it only picks up if there's a three D. And you still had to rely on a 2D chipset. So it's kind of like that. You can think of it. Um, I don't think... Let me see. It should be right here. Yeah, it is. Okay, yeah. So this is one of those video cards I was talking... It's not exactly that. But it is based on the 8514, I think. Yeah, 8514. That's just... Yeah, it's exactly right there. That's exactly where that card will go. Either there or there. Uh, it'll probably work in the other slots, but it probably won't display anything. But it will... Uh, nope. It will not work in a 32-bit th slot period. So it's specifically designed for 16-bit slot, preferably that one right there. I think it really likes having video expandable video cards in slot number 3. But... From what I understand, this graphics chip does not have 
like text note support. I don't again, don't quote me on this. this. Is just paraphrasing. And this chip will the main onboard chip will pick up, do that grunt work, transfer it to this here, and then output through there. It also works for like MCGA if this doesn't have MCGA support or CGA support. It could be rendered on the this chip and sent out through here. Why they did it, I don't know exactly. Again, don't. It's not a hundred percent gospel. I might be just talking out of my ass. In fact, I think I probably am. But that's how I understand it to work. I gotta test this card. That's yeah. Set you back over. Yeah. So uh, we do have BIOS ROMs. We got the speaker Hector speaker and battery connector. Uh, the obvious giveaway that this is an A series board is 64 kilobytes of level one, level two cache, 64 kilobytes of cache. Again, I was pointing to the video chip. Oop, try not to get some of the glare. Right now, uh, I believe that's the RAM deck. You got your speed generators. That should be the RAM for the video onboard video. No, that's the RAM for the onboard video. I don't know what that is off the top of my head. Hmm. Oh, it's some kind of static RAM. Anyway, uh, you got your two COM port, or one COM port, one parallel port, uh, mouse keyboard, your two memory slots. You got two memory slots. Power, that's not standard. Uh, uh, that's, I believe, the controller for the floppy. Spot for a uh, brain stop. For a 387 coprocessor. Uh, glue logic, probably memory controller. Da 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 da. Oh, I guess I should show one of the memory boards. Okay. So memory board one and two. Um, I looked up the model numbers, and if I'm doing it right, they should be. Well, it says it right there. Four megabytes of RAM. Four megabytes of RAM. You got eight megabytes on a 386. You're doing pretty darn good. Huh. It's about time for this to be, but that's, there's IBM for you. God damn it, let me mute that. No, I'm not doing another take. So, basically, instead of having, the Model 60 had 30 pin SIM slots, I think right here, or right here, somewhere. And that was a 286. And then they decided, you know what, fuck that interoperability, fuck having memory standards, fuck monetization. We're going to do it like this and make special boards because fuck you, that's why we're IBM. So yeah. Now, it is upgradable. Uh, do I have one handy? Yes, I do. Now, the cheaper model 60s and 80s uh, came with these, specifically the 60. This is the ES type. I was talking about memory. Now this is a very simple, very simple memory expansion card for IBM PS2s, specifically 32-bit. And you just drop it into the 32-bit slot. And if I can do this through the phone, like so. Ta-da! Yeah, so there, uh, I believe this gets you two to eight more megabytes or something like that. Yeah, not exactly high capacity. But, and it's also slower than this memory. So this memory is faster than this memory. So if you had to start putting in cards like this, yeah, the, the kind of performance kind of started to tank. Because you have memory on the bus instead of memory on its own bus. And then it just, yeah, it just goes to hell. But if you needed like a small RAM drive, you put these in here. You locate the RAM drive where it would only use this RAM, not this faster RAM. And then you had one hell of a fast RAM disk. Yeah, well, relatively speaking. Without, you know, necessarily hurting their onboard speed. But yeah, uh, that's, so that would be a, oop, oop. I'm just going to set that there. You know, now you got 8 megs, another 8 megs for 16. You know, you throw in your old video card. 
I'm not going to fully put it in there. I'm just going to set it there. But yeah, this is shaping up. Okay, I'm going to pop that CPU and I'm going to pop it into the other machine and let's go see if it's working. Ta da! He didn't even break the clips off. What a nice guy that guy was for including those in there. I feel so much better for that right there. Oh. Yeah, that was half the fucking battle right there, just cleaning bezels. Oh, I gotta take the screws off. Sorry. I'm just gonna use my big, ugly yellow screwdriver. It's big. It's ugly. Left handed. Left handed. Because I haven't sprung for a tripod for this camera phone mount yet. And why am I doing this on the camera? Because it's 4K, 30. <sighs> da -da -da. So, uh, oh yeah, that's right. That's what I had in here. Uh, it's going to take you there. So I had the memory controller or the cache controller, this uh, coprocessor. I had everything in here. I had a SCSI card. I have a, a. I forgot what that was. Uh, oh, it's some kind of trunk. Uh, trunk connecting to your mainframe. Upgraded terminal video cards. Upgraded other cards. I just kind of left them in here because I could. But to look at this in here. Now that's showing 50 megahertz too. Well, no matter what, um, since the last time you saw this, I did find two four meg cards. Those are not the same ones. Those are different ones. But I'm going to pull this monstrosity of a support brace out and get these installed. Uh, damn, I wish I could show you doing it because it's... I don't have a tripod for this thing. Uh, well, I guess I'll have to turn it off and show you the Okay, result. so I turned the flash on and I'm going to record at least the step-by-steps here for getting these things apart. Now, number one, this any hard drive has to be taken out. Any drive has to be taken out. And they're done with these little wee screws. They close, they just close down this clamp and it clamps down the driveway and the drive rail clamps to the hard drive in or floppy drive or whatever you happen to have here. Uh, so that's got to come out first. So there are four screws. One, two, three, four. Take those out. This pulls forward and out towards me and swivels out on this metal hinge and it comes out. It is harder to put back in than it is to take out because you always have these because uh, the screw holes sometimes just don't quite line up. Now, uh, so yeah, going on, next step. Okay, so I got that out of there. You can see the four screws that came out, and it just hinged out and swung out. So I was looking, and I had, I had misremembered. Um, all these A-series model 80s, are going to be with the cache are all going to be 25 megahertz 386s for some reason i was thinking that um they some of them came with a 20 megahertz 386 and there are some with a three 20 megahertz 386 but not with the l2 cache the l2 cache pretty much means it's a uh 25 megahertz model so but this is the one that i have uh a little kirsty i got the tape drive out of her but CPU goes in next, and pin one's all right, pin one is marked, so it is a simple matter of, uh, I'm going to need two hands for this, yeah, yeah, two hands. All right, a little bit of flex, but I had to I had to put my other hand on the back side of the case just so I don't tip it over. But 
she's got a CPU now. So let's see what happens. I'm going to leave. I'm going to take all this crap out because I don't need. I don't need it. I just want to see if it posts. I think I'm going to leave this card in because that's a video card. One of the two. No, this is the video card. I'm going to leave that in. I'm going to pull everything out real quick. And then we're going to see if she works. Okay. So I just had to take pictures of this. One. I got my special standard screwdriver just for PS2s. Why? It's nice and long. Because if you look right here, you have to get through screws to the other side. Like that one right there. And it's all the way through here. Just like that. Perfect screwdriver for this machine. How many of you say you have a perfect tool for your one case that you wouldn't like? Anyway, I digress. This is an IBM card. It's kind of distinct. It has that 15-pin uh, mail connector. This this is a, basically the interface for uh, the mainframe. So you, this would connect to an IBM mainframe, and it would talk to a uh, terminal card. Uh, it's a it's a specific terminal thing. Something I've never used is something I'm never probably going to use as who honestly will have a use for an IBM terminal or even has one. I'm never going to, anyway, never say never, but I wanted to take a look at this just because look at all these square things in the back. So I pulled the glue and, oh, IBM cam bubble memory. At least I presume it's billable memory. Yes, the only reason you would have so many identical part numbers, I would assume. Look at all that pretty memory. But it has a free of components area and a Motorola 68000. So this was a whole computer with memory, uh, memory and a CPU on this card. And it interfaced with the bottom one here. So that connector probably goes right directly to that. And that is the the ROMs to get that uh, 68,000 booted. That is some kind of chip. I presume it probably is the chip that is responsible ultimately for talking to that connector. And the rest is just glue logic. Uh, MOSTEC RAM, maybe? Uh, some glue logic, glue logic, 60, da, 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 da. Uh, what are 65 and C22? I would likely, I would, it's probably some interface chip between the 6800 and the outside world. But this card's sole function is to translate between, uh, a terminal inter a specific terminal interface with IBM mainframes and the machine. And I just now noticed this one has the extra pins down here. Um, obviously, that would go to some certain motherboards, just like the extra pins on the video cards. Uh, I obviously don't have one of those handy. Otherwise, I would show you, but I'll put that back together. The other two cards in the bottom, I don't know if I should pull them out. And sh but they are nothing special. Uh, they are IBM, actual IBM cards, and you get two more serial ports. So four, four additional serial ports on this thing. So likely this life, its life was spent as a, a in-between. So you would have, you could probably have four people, eh, four connections, log in, and it would be the go-between between the mainframe and the modems or external people on the modems that would call in. So if you had people working from home or something like that, or around the field, they can remote terminal in through this, the modem, modem to the serial port, serial port to the card, card to the CPU to that card, and the whole nine yards. So it was most likely spent its life as a remote access machine. And yeah, turning it on. Right. Okay, so definitely going to invest in a tripod for this camera. So, uh, power, keyboard, uh, video. Now, one annoying thing about IBM video cards, especially in this era, was they liked filling in a hole right there uh, because reasons. So, you either A, you take a little drill bit and you drill out that hole, which I do quite often, or B, you get a cable just by a random 
cheap cable and focus, focus, you cut out the pin. Either way works. This thing still works for everything. Just plug it in, just like, you know, uh, is that on? Yep. So let's see if she works or if she pops. Uh-oh. Out of range. There it goes. It fucking works. All it needed was a CPU. Uh, let's see. Two megs. Three megs. Shit, I need a boot disk. What can I boot from? What can I boot from? What can I boot from? Five, six megs. Well, this is not taking up. This will work. No, it's not fitting in the floppy drive. Shit. Uh, one six one one six three. That's normal. Yeah, whatever. Okay, F1. No, okay. So it went right to basic because it didn't find a thing. Shouldn't have. Okay, so uh, I gotta play with the floppy drive, but it works. And that video card works. Let's see if that other video card works. So I'm gonna set you down and we're gonna give that a shot. And I'm gonna poke around the floppy drive for a moment. Okay, it turns out it was just an easy fix. Uh, this is what it looks like. Um, I wish I had gotten a picture of it, but I didn't. But basically what had happened is that little... I can't... So basically what had happened, this little guy here had come out of the slot and it was just slightly askew. So it wouldn't let me insert a floppy drive because it kept jamming. So uh, I just poked it a little bit and... Perfect. So maybe it'll work. Maybe not. Uh, it's working, at least mechanically. So I'm going to clean it off with a little bit of alcohol, put it back into Nya, and we're going to give this an actual real disc, and because I probably ruined that one, and we're going to give this another shot with the other video card. Actually, I'm going to see, this is one of the disadvantages of not having a script. We're just fucking flying off the seat of your hands. There's no video card in that now, but there is video on the back. In fact, it goes... Eh, eh, focus right there. So if I put that, yeah, it doesn't need look, video. Ooh, glare. Can I turn this off without? See, it works just fine without it. Can I cancel that? No, it won't let me cancel that. Anyway, so it's doing the memory test. So it does not need a video card. It has its own video chip in. It just outputs through those two slots when it detects a video card in there. But no, it's working just fine without it. In fact, I think it's counting a little faster. Maybe it's just me. 8064, okay. 601 is floppy drive, I believe. Yep, those are normal errors. Warble, warble, warble. Yep, same thing. All right, uh, let's test it with the other video card. At least we'll know if the video card physically mostly kind of sort of works. Okay, so I got the CTA card in. I got it hooked up. Uh, got the monitor on, and let's give her a... Now, I do have a floppy disk in it this time. Where's that power switch? Oh, it's right there. Beep. Nope. I heard a boop. For... Yep. Yay! One meg. 
I don't know what the other stuff is for, but looks like it's got a ROM version, 1 meg RAM, 16 bit micro channel. Ta da! And now we wait. Now we wait. I'm hoping to really try out this Sony Vegas 15. Um, well, it's not Sony Vegas anymore. Um, Humble Bundle, I just bought it t t uh, yesterday. Uh, they had Sony Vegas. Okay. I'm hoping. Uh, where's the F1? Oh, oh, it didn't like that disc. Uh, so the disc is probably not reading because it went dropped right to here. Let me try one other disc. Uh, I hope I didn't mess that disc up too badly. Uh, it wasn't over. They're just floppies. I'll uh, boot. Yeah, let's try this one. Put your fingers are loop. It takes two hands. No signal. Oh, it's struggling, but it's doing it. It's struggling, but it's doing it. So I might need to recap that drive. Yeah, it's working. Imagine that. PCI read configuration failure. Who would have thunk it? I just want to see if this... It's going a bit slow, but... I think it's because of that floppy drive just needed to be... Yeah, go to hell. Oh. Anyway. But yeah, that video card physically works. Or, at the very least, it will take output from ya to put up something now. Uh, so that works. Um, do I have my Model 80 reference disc? Uh, I don't need to boot 98. One second. I do, I do, I do, ooh. I got this one. Now this one is already, uh, set up for that guy. Uh, so... It has ADF files for a special memory card, a five and a quarter floppy card, and a uh, SCSI. So I'm going to pop this one in, even though I don't have a battery, so it's not going to matter. I just want to see if this will boot it, and I can use this to test. So, car chunk. And, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, there it is. Put a little hair around it. And now we play the waiting game. Blah, blah, blah. Yep, no battery, no time. It's taking a sweet time. So I definitely need to take the drive apart and at least oil it and service it better. I just ran a cotton swab across the heads, alcohol cotton swab. So it might be having sea carriers, it might just be... Uh, I do have the originals. Exploring, reference, you know. Boop. I heard boop. Boop. 
Uh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, I have to use F8. Which one is it? Is that it? Yes. Okay, enter. Yeah, well, I'll... I really don't need to do this because it's not going to be doing anything, but I'm just going to let it do it. Hopefully there might be like a like a test the system part. It might be on the other disc. Uh, maybe it's on this one. Anyway, I'm not going to use my originals. Let's go back in the box. Yeah, whatever. Uh, slot, what's slot 5? Uh, 1, 2, 3... Or is it counting from the bottom? One, two, three, four. Yeah, that's counting from the bottom. Joy. So I didn't know what the card was for. Yeah. But I did, did not complain about that. So obviously the scarcity driver that I have on that disc works. Because it says it'll be doing that. So let's give this another shot. I mean, that really is the... It's both a blessing and a curse for these IBM PS2s, how they have the BIOS on the system disk, or the setup program on the on the system disk, and it just once you're used to it, it's it's you know you get to you know it becomes second nature, you know, and you don't really think about it. It's like, okay, let's get this floppy drive going. One six five, ooh, one six three. That means the time's not set. But there's no battery in there, so there's no point in setting the time. So the dry floppy drive is working a lot better. So it just needs some... Yeah, it is automatically no. Oh, where's the end key? There's the end key. Yeah, whatever. Alrighty. Yay. Let's do that first. Okay. Okay. F3 is up here. Test it. Ooh. Please stand by. Please stand by. Please stand by. Please stand by. Beep. So it says uh, type F880. Okay, I don't know if that's for sure. It makes memory. That's right. Keyboard, parallel, disk drive, Mathco, uh, system board, async, so serial. It says it has a display adapter 8514-A. That's technically not true because this is an 8514-A. This is a real 8514-A. This is what was in it. That is an ATI knockoff of the blah, 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 blah. So it thinks it is a 65 floor plus A. So it's going to try to install drivers for it. Where's the Y key? Okay, so it's just going to run through a battery of test real quick, I hope. Do not power off a reboot. Okay, and the furnace decides to kick on. Hooray! So we're going to have that noise in a moment. Okay, so while this is playing around with the memory test, I decided, what the hell, let's pull this out. You can realize, you see, uh-oh, there's nothing in there. It was in there before. Dink. So it copies the video. So in theory, you can have something running on monitor number one right here. And that will take up some kind of 3D or something like that on monitor number two. So it is, it might actually still be something wrong with this card, or I don't know. Either way, it's just either it's just copying what it's given. But it is, yeah. Sweet. All right, we'll be back in a moment. Once this is done. Okay. That's still playing around with that memory test. Um. When I was looking at, I just looking at this card, and oh, pulled it apart. That's pretty. Look at all that RAM. Look at all that RAM. 
64 c so 64 probably 64 bit so judging that there's a whole bunch that's removable and a whole bunch that's not they got interesting sockets I don't know how much memory is on here probably a megabyte eh, more or less wait 64 it looks like it might have even anyway doesn't matter you can do the math on your own this is the, what's underneath the hood a 44.9 megahertz crystal and a 25.175 so that's obviously doing something uh, yeah. it also has that connection down here I wonder what that's for huh now I'm curious. I'm going to find out what that extra little bit's for. What machines had it? I don't remember any of. I don't remember any machines having it, or other any other any of my other machines having it. Hmm. And they didn't sock anything either. They had only so much space in these little short-ass cards. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, I didn't get to. I didn't get the camera up in time, but which shape? Oh, okay. Let's test the keyboard. So let's test the keyboard board. Uh, whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, keys are okay, press 1, enter. F1, enter, whatever. Uh, I don't know how it exactly tests that without something plugged into it, but okay. Uh, it's going to want to flop. Uh, yeah, let's give it a shot. Pull that disc out. Let's see. Wide selection of any mini mighty scratch discs. Alrighty. Hear that floppy disk? Oh, if you look just closely. Oh, I had it there. You can see the the bottom of the thing spinning. If you look right it oh, oh, right in there. Come on. There it is. That drive is sounding better and better and better. I think it just needed I think it just needs a little bit of servicing. Damn. It's worth it just fun. It's worth the 80 bucks that I paid for everything. Yeah, it's worth it just for the floppy disk with the the tray, the CPU. It's just worth it for those two pieces that I, and the I needed. The extra front panel bonus, the extra memory cards a bonus, the spare motherboards a bonus. Uh, I don't know if I'll probably use that SCSI card because I already got a a decent one in here. Oh. And then retest. So it formats a disk and then reads it to make sure that, hey, I formatted you with all ones. Am I getting all ones back? Or all zeros or whatever the hell it formatted it with. Either way, sounds okay. I mean, I even got a special, I even got the, the see, that's the, I even got the special SCSI cable it comes with in that group of stuff. I mean, look at that. That's the annoying stuff that IBM saddled you with. Uh, I mean, if they could find a, a way to put on special CPUs with a special socket just to screw you over, they would have done it, I think. Because they, they said, oh, no, we can't have ISA. We can't have industry standard architecture. We can't have that. We're not making enough money. Because they, you know. And then they fucked themselves over. 
So, hoisted by their own petard. Come on. How long does that take a test take? Obviously. Uh, so, yeah. Do, 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 do. Still spinning my thing. I was playing along at home. There's the model. So this was the top of the line model lady. Yeah, it's a little warm. All right, put it on the right protect. This is yeah. This is what I wanted to check. I wanted to see if that worked. Uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. da -da -da. There you go. Da -da. Put that back in. Yeah. Maybe it actually tried to write something, and I don't know. Let's do it. Okay. Don't tell me first. Hey, you have a bad drive. Put your reference disc back in. Well, it says completed. Put that disc back. Ooh, Tething Maths Co. Well, didn't complain. Yeah, didn't complain about that. Ah. Yep, okay. Ooh, it's testing the video RAM. Now, I don't know if it's testing that video RAM or if it's testing that video RAM. Uh, yeah, sure, why not? Looks good. Nope. Huh. <laughs> Okay, so it obviously thinks it's probably trying to send special commands to that, and it does not like those special commands. <laughs> I might rerun that with the actual card and see what actually happened. Uh, no, no mouse. I didn't think I needed one. Okay, now that's. I wanted to see if that SCSI card was working. Uh, Sonic is disabled. If, uh, then we'll just have your system, blah, 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 blah. You know, service time. Okay, whatever. Due to the BIOS ones being disabled, it's because nice and... Okay, I guess. It's, it's probably complaining that it didn't detect a drive, so it didn't install the BIOS. What if testing... I can't find the problem. Okay, okay, okay. It's okay. Leaving the testing program, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so it immediately dumps you back to this. Okay. So, it, obviously, it would have told me if there was something wrong, but it obviously... Um, I guess it really did not like... It was expecting an IBM... 8514, not an ATI 8514. Oh well, I think that should about do it. I'm gonna get this video edited on Vegas and hopefully I get it on as soon as I can, maybe tonight. Ooh, that'd, that'd be cool. 24 hour turnaround. But I'm gonna put her back together and I'm gonna set her down for the moment. Uh, thank you for watching and dealing with my crappy camera. Well, oh, crappy camera holding. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, that drive is working so much better now. It just needs to. It just needs some exercise. No. Ooh, what's this? Oh, there's power on power. Okay. Ooh. Okay. So apparently it's... Yeah, whatever. 
Can I do anything in here? I don't know, recording this 4K footage makes my camera a bit warm. Okay, so... So this, if I actually had a hard hard drive set up, I'd go into here. Uh, I don't need to do that, I don't need that, 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 that. Let's just see what it has. 8 megs, usable, da, da. Direct DMA on parallel, woo, uh. Okay, so... Unrecognized adapter in slot five. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I might have to get the right ADF for that. It's it's things I can do for other things. But uh it's good for now. I'm gonna put her back together and I'm gonna set her next to her cousin over and now and move on to the next project for now. God I like these machines. Alright, this has been Fat Guy with Old Computers, signing off for now.